Hello everyone and here I am with Carol Mitchell who today is going to do a demonstration on watercolour painting. This is going to be interesting because I haven't done watercolour painting till, since I was about six and she's going to demonstrate on me and it's always good I think to demonstrate on someone who is completely has no idea what they're doing um, because I'll ask all the stupid questions and that's okay so none of you have to. And so I'm going to flip between my cameras and um, you'll be able to see my hand. So I'll be doing some of this. So you'll be able to see my hands on occasion and me with a paintbrush. That will be a novel experience. And um, I'm used to writing, not painting, really. So I'll flip between cameras. But at the moment, we're going to be um, face to camera for a little moment. So Carol, just give me a background before we start about why watercolour painting for you? Why watercolour painting? Um, I think it's the clarity of the colour. It's the clearness. It's almost like, I always think I probably could have been really interested in stained glass because it's that clarity mm. of the clearness of the colour yeah. um, and the pureness. and the more pure the paint is, the pigment is, and some are more pure than others, um, the more I like it really. Um, I'm slightly disappointed in my pigments then, but I'm just doing it as a novice to get a, an idea. And then if, it's, if, I, if it gives me the bug, then obviously I'll go and buy some of these pigments in tubes. But I, I'm sadly using the watercolors that I've used for many years um, with the kids. <laughs> There is, a, um, there is a problem always with beginners. Um, they either come with the wrong equipment or they don't come with any. <laughs> you end up having to lend all your own. Or when I taught at Adult Ed at Gillingham, uh, thankfully they bought some uh, reasonable stuff in the students could actually buy to start themselves off with um, a little small watercolour palette. What you've got, Unfortunately, because it's um, it, the binder that's mixed with your colours will be chalky, yes, rather than clear. Yeah. So the the problem always is um, it's a bit like playing golf. Um, you you know it's great if you've got a proper golf set, but if you go along with one of those children's plastic ones, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's much, much the same along, the, along those lines. You need a decent brush. You need some decent paints. I've got good brushes. And paper. I've got good brushes. So I've got expensive yeah. brushes, Royal and Lang brushes. So I've got very good brushes, but I haven't got, and we're in lockdown, so it was a bit tricky. To I know. Them. It's difficult, isn't it? We've gone through what we need to get going in an imperfect world and then a perfect world. Yeah. We'll do what we can. You can only do what you can with what materials you've got, but understand that there's more limitation down to, and it will be down to, you'll find that there's a big difference if you can get a sable brush or a sable synthetic, because sable's quite expensive now. But if you had a sable synthetic brush, it would actually hold the water and the paint much better than a, just a synthetic brush. Okay. So you need a sable brush, ideally. Well, sable synthetic, because the the sable ones are really expensive to buy. I think I've got two really lovely brushes here, which is a size eight, and I think that's a sable yeah. synthetic brush. That one, that I would use that one out of what you've got. Yes, that's the best. That's the best one of the bunch, I think. <laughs> it doesn't have to be big. It really doesn't. Have, I I always try to encourage. I've got um, a whole list of what I would give to, to students on the first class of what they materials they needed because that was always the thing the thing that came up with beginners but I don't know what to buy and I get in the shop and I think god what am I going to get when I'm in here because look look at all this what do I choose I know um, in a sweet shop yeah <laughs> it's like that it's like going in yeah, I know it's um, like, you all look lovely <laughs> but I think if you get if you get a taste for it, you know, if you really feel you want to have a go, it's just a case of having the right equipment um, to start you off, because the, otherwise you're limited with what you can do and you'll get really frustrate, 
frustrated with it because it won't do what you want it to do. But some of that is simply because you haven't got the right equipment. If you haven't got the right brush or you haven't got the paper, um, the, the right paper is the, the main thing, I would think, because without that, it just won't do anything you want it to do. Right. So you need a sable synthetic brush, ideally. We yep. mastered that. Got that one. Um, and then paper. I've got some just traditional watercolour paper. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, this, this, what I've got here, this is just Bockingford. Bockingford. Um, Bockingford. Mm -hmm. Um, 140 pounds in uh, that's the weight of the ream, oh. okay? Because the thicker the paper, the heavier the ream would be, basically. I thought so you, it, your piece of paper had cost you 140 pounds. I was like, wow, <laughs> no, that's weight. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can hear this, yeah. So it's quite thick, yeah. Mine's it's quite, quite a thick paper. You can get it even thicker um, and then you wouldn't need to stretch it at all. But basically, if I was to wet this whole area, mm. the paper would buckle. Right. And the lighter, the pe so the thinner the paper, so the lighter weight paper, and you have to be careful because 140 GSM isn't the same as 140 pound right. pocket food. It's half the weight, so it means it's much thinner. If you go for 140 GSM, it's too thin. Okay, so you need 280 GSM as a minimum, really. Yeah, yeah, which is the equivalent of 140 pound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so paper is important. So you need your synthetic sable brush. You need a, at least 280 GSM paper. Yeah. You're going to be having to stretch it, as you said. Yeah. Um, with this weight, you can get away with it buckling and then it will go down flat again. Okay. So, but that the, the fact that it buckles, what's called cockling, mm. the fact that it buckles, it can be a bit of a nuisance trying to do a nice flat wash when all you've got is sort of rivulets yeah. happening. So on very lightweight paper, that's what happens. If you work on cartridge, that's what you'll get because that's how the paper reacts with the water. Um, the thing with watercolour, the very, okay, with, sorry. with regard to paints, what's the best brand? And I know you said tubes are better because I loved your analogy about the, the golf. Going <laughs> OK, I, um, I haven't got my small box in here with me, but I think I gave you a list of two reds, yes. two blues and two yellows. You did. So you only really need six colours to start off with. Hmm. However, what happens is, you think the first because these come ready mixed you're thinking to yourself well which red which yellow which blue um, and so it helps to have a cool and a warm in each color so it's pretty easy with yellow because if you've got a cadmium yellow it's much more like sunshine mm. uh, as opposed to a lemon yellow which is like a daffodil color right. so one's much warmer the sunshiny yellow the cadmium is much warmer than the lemon yellow. Mm. And it's the same with the reds. There's a cadmium red, which is more orangey than crimson alizarin, which is a sort of ruby kind of wet red. Mm. And then the blues, they're slightly more difficult to sort of put your finger on, but sometimes you get a slightly more uh, reddy blue, which you can't actually see, but it is, which is the French ultramarine. It's got, it, because it's darker blue, it's just slightly more red on the red, purpley side. Okay. And then the cool one is the one that leans towards the green. Uh -huh. So if you've got, or I'd go for a middle, middle of the road one, which is cobalt. So it's cobalt and ultramarine, cadmium red, crimson alizarin, uh, cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. So with those six colors, you can more or less get any colour you want because you're just mixing primaries to get the colours that you want. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And, Is there anything and else you need? Sorry? Is there anything else you critically need? Paint, um, brush, paint, palette. No, I can show you my paints. I've got a set of white night paints. They come like this. There's loads of them. 
and you can see yeah it's absolutely when you look at them you think oh my goodness which colors do i pick yes but you could do the same with this uh uh that's crimson and is a deep a deeper red i don't know if you can see a deep red yes a, a much more orangey red a lemon yellow and a cadmium yellow because it's more orangey and the same with the blue this is cobalt and ultramarine is next to it but you can never tell with ultramarine until you wet it just how blue it is so um I mean, I've got a huge box here, and mainly because I like the clarity of these. These are really clear colours. They're called white knights. Um, but I, I only ever had a small, tiny box, but I kept colours in that I liked. And I found over a long, long time, I ended up taking out everything. And when I actually looked at what I got in my box, it was only what I just said to you. <laughs> So after all the all the experimentation of what works and what doesn't, the only thing I'd added to that was a viridian green. Mm. Um, everybody, all my students hated it. It's a really bright synthetic green. Mm. But in fact, when you add a bit of red, a bit of blue or a bit of yellow to it, you can get whole different shades of green. And it's a really good color to mix with a dark blue and a dark red to get almost black. So viridian on its own is an awful colour, but a great mixing colour. So that went in the box with the two reds and two blues and two yellows. Um, and basically, you don't need a black either because you can mix that. Black or white? Yeah, you don't need white because you're going to use your paper. If you mix white with watercolour, you end up with an opaque paint. So students would say, how can I get pink? Well, because you'd normally add white to red to get a pink, but all you do is make the red really thin. Um, the main thing I've got down here, I've written down, the, the most important thing really for beginner is to realise that um, there's two elements to watercolour. Um, one is the paint itself, which is important, but the other important thing is this. That's why it's called watercolour. And this can be your white paint. So if you actually use more water and thin the pigment down, it becomes pink. Genius. Okay. So you don't have, it, this is, <laughs> it does two jobs, this. <laughs> and I'll show, I'll demonstrate. I'll it while you're in the middle. I have got tea no. on one side, <laughs> no. and water on the other side. So it's, I've just got to make sure I don't get mixed up at this point. <laughs> It's absolutely fatal to have a cup of tea or water because even when you put it miles away, you'll reach over just to dip your brush in. I'm going to try and avoid doing that. Okay, so you, how do we approach it? I'm, I, like, what's the runway in? <laughs> because I was okay. quite terrified now. <laughs> well, I mean, let, let's just go over what I just said. There's two parts of the water because water will not only thin the colour, but it will also allow you to manipulate the, the mixture that you make, the colour that you make. And ideally the, the liquid with the paint, so the paint that you make needs to be like, a bit like syrup okay. rather than paste. If okay. you make it too thick, um, it will be, you'll have problems with it if you make it too thick. And that's the other thing that beginners do, normally work too, too thick, make, make the paint too thick, hardly any water, and then a lot of paste, if you like, but it should be more like syrup. So you want it to be runny, you know, to be able to get anything you want out of it. Um, so the two parts of this paint, um, it's made up of water and the paint, and you can adjust it by adding more water or more paint, and so the technique we're going to do today, this watercolour te um, technique, which is wet in wet, mm -hmm. um, strictly speaking, you can get two effects with this at least. Over time, you'll realise you can adjust it just a little bit and get loads out of it. But I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Let's take it out. It might be easier. Yes, if you hold um, it a little bit. 
when I was at college, I did 20, I learned 20 different techniques um, when I was doing illustration. So when I first went to college, I learned 20 different techniques with watercolor. Um, probably only use about eight of them most of the time. The rest are just sort of gimmicks. Okay. Um, like you can add a bit of pastel, you can add this over the top. So they're really just gimmicks. But I really wish that someone had taught me these techniques years ago because I spent an awful long time playing around, trying to work out um, how, you, how you, you paint something and think, I can't do that again. How did I do it? Um, and so that's often the thing that throws beginners. They think, well, how did I do it? I've got to do it again and I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. So learning a few techniques means that you've got your ABC of how to put the thing together. Yeah. Um, I'm, going for and, pen. I'm going for a pen now. <laughs> right, I might need to mark these up as what on earth they are. Right. I've got a okay. Pen. Well, all I've done, one's lighter than the other one on here. Yes. And the only reason it's lighter is because this was runny colour next to runny colour on dry paper. Mm -hmm. And this is runny colour or watercolour on top of water. Okay. So water does two jobs. It will allow you to manoeuvre the paint around, but it will also make it, it's like adding white. So if you add too much water, it will get pale. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick demo. That's perfect. So if you drop your camera down and I'll watch you while you Okay. Start. You do a quick demo and then I'll, I'll have a go. Okay. It's likely to turn very bad, people, when I have a go. But we'll, I will listen and see how we Well, go. this is only really just to show you. You think when you start painting, it's going to run everywhere mm. and run away with you. But in actual fact, if I just do... A run. This is just to show you that it will always run where you wet the paper. It sounds an obvious thing. It sounds so obvious, but you forget it. Oh, look at that. It's not gone anywhere else on the paper. It's only gone where I've wet it. Yes. And it has to work quite hard. Gravity has to work quite hard, hard to pull it away. If, you know, I've had to tip it right up before it's yeah. um, before it's actually fallen off the paper. So the water is a bit like you're underpainting, isn't it? It's the technique we're going to do, wet in wet, mm. um, is used for lots and lots of different things. I'll explain what it's used for in a minute. But really, this is just to show. To, it's just a. It's one of these demos that hopefully sort of sticks in your mind so that you can see that in order to make to manipulate the paint it's not only about how much water you put with the mixture but it's also about where you want this to run yes it'll only go where i've wet the paper so even though you're doing wet in wet this is just water on a brush even though i'm doing um, even when you do wet in wet, you still need to think about where you're going to put the water on the paper to get the paint to go where you want it to go. If you don't cover the whole area with water, you'll end up with little dry white patches, which could be what you want. Yes, I see that. So if you were doing, so if, if you were doing, um, let's just, uh, just quick, quick demo. So let's just say you were doing a flower. Um, this is background color. So I can use pale colored water, if you like, and make it slightly stronger. It's a little bit more paint on the brush, that's all. So if I was doing something like a hydrangea, That's how it could actually start, mm. because that's what happens. The, the wet in wet technique is useful for backgrounds. Um, so behind everything, if you like. 
Mm. Or you can use it for skies. I've got some examples I'll show you in a moment, but you can see where I've just done mostly water on one side, mostly dark pigment on the other. And even with that, you can, this is another technique, by the way, it's just lifting out with a bit of tissue. But where I've not touched it at all, it's just the white paper in the middle, which could be the highlight on the flower. And that's the thing that makes watercolour really difficult. The fact that um, you're trying to keep some of the white. So you, you work, instead of, you work from light to dark. So there's the light, there's the next tone down. And then I can add, when I add more uh, layers of paint on it, it will go darker. Um, yeah? Yeah, I understand. Um, let me just. Well, this is a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> you can oh, see you've been teaching for a lot of years because you're very patient. You're not laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've, I've seen. I can't show you some of my first ones. They were they were awful. <laughs> um, so, if you were doing skies, yeah, this is all wet in wet. There's the heart. There's I've gone up to the dry edge. Yeah. So I've I've put the wet the paper and gone up to a dry edge and then I've done wetting wet underneath it. So I've wet the paper and then just dropped the paint in where I want it to go. In fact, you can lift out as well with um, a tissue if you wanted to. This is the same thing, only it's yellow underneath. Mm. And then wetting wet on top because you can do once a layer is dry. You can actually, so when the bottom layer, so when you're very, when all this is completely dry, I can do more on top if I want. I can re-wet over the top. I'll do it on here. You think it's going to lift, but in fact, it won't. All the time, this paint underneath is really quite thin. Mm. It will only lift if you go too pasty with the mixture. So you can see, look. None of it's moved. I've still got white in the middle. Yes. But I could actually do... Not to use too much paint then. I could still do wetting wet over the top. Mm. You can what see it's taken off and done its own thing. It looks like it's raining. <laughs> yes. That's how you get rain. You, all you do is tilt the paper. That's incredible. <laughs> I have such a new appreciation. If one light layer underneath, it won't pick up and move. But you can see, look, you can use it for skies. So, but if you don't want it to move too much, you know how I, I've, I've just shown you how I've got this. Um, but if you don't want it to move too much, there it's down to timing. Right. So it, it's just down to timing and slightly thicker mix. It will try and push out mm. into the water. So it will bleed out upwards into the mixture behind it because the back was slightly damp. Mm. So it's just down to timing. It's, uh, and it's one of those things that you just have to keep practicing. But you can see they're all different skies. Amazing, dramatic skies. Yeah, you could. I mean, it. It's just down to there's the hard edge again. Yes. Um, but you can also, as well as skies, you can see this one. It's really quite soft. I don't know if you can see on that. It looks quite soft in areas. That softness comes because the paper is still slightly damp. Right. There are. There's, what we've got here? So I've shown you that you can add another layer over the top once underneath is completely dry. If you want to add paint to it while it's slightly damp, you can, but the mixture has to be thicker. Mm. So you have to mix the mixture up a little bit thicker to get it to stay where you want it to stay. Otherwise it disperses and creates sort of what they call cauliflowers, it'll push it right back. 
and you'll end up with a, 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 a frilly edge where the water's pushed all the pigment back. It's called cauliflowers. You're going to end up with a field of cauliflowers, people. <laughs> um, and so the, that's, that's the, great, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> That's the only thing, really. Um, the, the only other important thing is to say all the time it's wet. So we do wet and wet. Te- we'll do a demo in a moment. I'll do, demonstrate and you can have a go. Mm. When you have a wet and wet, it, the paper paper is shiny because of the water in it. But once the shine starts to go off the paper, you can't really add any more water or any more paint to it. You've just got to wait and let it dry. You can always do once it's completely dry you can always do another layer over the top but if you try and add to the background while it's still damp it will push everything away okay okay so there that's the main thing with watercolor i know it's like um when you start it's a bit like trying to take too much in i do understand i'm trying to absorb it i'm just fascinated i want to see you do it and then i'll have a go okay um, I've got a painting and then I thought, well, I don't know, this is a bit too uh, ambitious, but I want to show you, look, I don't know if you can see, can you see the drawing? Yes, it looks like a dancer. No, it's a landscape, it's always a landscape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, have imag- I have a very overactive imagination. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to do a sky, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a sky and then I'm going to do it on here and hopefully you'll see how this builds up. Brilliant. Okay, so that you can have a little go. So on this piece of paper, I've got a a mountain here and a few rocks, few trees, and I'm gonna do a sky because that's, you need to see how all the things go together. Once you, you don't have to paint them all at once. Often as a beginner, you think I've got to do it all. And and it's all wet and you're panicking because you think I can't, can't, can't cope with it. But you can stop anywhere, the best place on a landscape is to stop skyline wherever you've drawn the horizon this one's um there yeah. on this so i'm going to do this part the sky okay um i'm going to keep it fairly simple it'll be mostly one color so that you can see but you could always if you try want to try it yourself you can always mix up two colors when you do wet in wet, you always need to mixture, mix your mixture up before you start. Okay. okay. You just move your camera slightly so we can see the whole piece of paper, just so we can yes. appreciate everything you're doing. There we go. That's is that better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Exactly. We can see the whole piece of paper now. That's great. This is like so we're doing the cooking if you, the other day. If you can try and keep you've got two pots of water try and keep one like your white paint yeah and the other one for just cleaning your brush in okay so mix your mixture up first so i've got things of cobalt in here i'm gonna light syrup okay Plenty because it's got to cover quite a large area. Okay. So the reason why I use the plate Mm -hmm. rather than a mixing palette is because over the years I've found it really useful. I can pull the paint across the plate and see just how thick it is. So that's why I've got the plate. You've got your mixture mixed. Are you all right, Leslie? Yeah, I'm watching and I'm having a little go of the mixture. I'd say mine is still on the water side. <laughs> syrup, we're not at, we're not at syrup yet. Add plenty of water. I, look, on my plate, it's easy for me to get that amount of paint quickly because I've got a little bit of tube colour. Yes. Um, it, you, your ch- students will say to me, uh, tube colour or, you know, palette. I've got both. I tend to use an awful lot of blue for skies. So often I'll buy tubes and I'll top up. I'll just top my box up with tubes if necessary. Okay. 
Right, I've got, I've got that. I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to wet the paper now. So there you go. Okay, we're wetting the paper next. Okay. So wherever you want the paint to run, wet the paper. Okay, so we're just doing the sky at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see the shine. Can you see the shine on my bit of paper? Yeah. I yeah, can't. You can, yeah. Yeah. All the time it's got that shine. You can add more paint, but once that goes dull and isn't shiny anymore, you can't add any more. And so here's my paint going in. Okay. If I want a few clouds, I'll just leave a few white spaces. If you want a little bit of rain, you know what to do. So it's just moving in the water. If you add um, too much, you can always lift a bit out with a bit of kitchen roll. Mm. Clouds, a few clouds, put a few clouds back. But all the time it's shiny, you can add more water. It will find its own level with more water, or I can add more colour. So I'm gonna just gonna add a little bit of pinky colour that I've got here, a little bit of that red. Now I suppose the, se the only secret with this, I'll turn, um, turn it around so you can see, the only secret with this is not to play around too much, as you can see. Okay, all oh, right, so I'm going to put a bit of red in, okay. I'm going to grab that. Yeah. It's just getting used to it, I think. It takes a while to get used to the paint and the brush and the equipment. Right, okay. If there's any bit that you don't like, you can always add more water, but be careful about doing too much of this on the surface because you'll end up mixing on the surface, mixing the two colours on the surface, and they won't look as clean as they would if you just left them. Yeah, I see. Okay. Do you want me to be brave and show you what I've done? Yeah, show me what you've done. Prepare. There you go. That's mine. Yeah, that's okay. If you want it to be slightly darker at the top. Yes. If it, um, like mine is normally the sky if you look up at the sky that's what happens it is slightly darker at the top if you still got that shine on your paper you can add a little bit more blue only the blue that you add to the top just make it a little bit thicker than the first one you put on if it as long as it's still shiny because look i can add, add if I, i'll do it first oh, oh yeah Okay, so I do that. It, it will find its own edge, but the paper has to be still be shiny. Okay, right. Mm, it's not really. Shall I make it shiny? Shall I put a bit Are of... you there? I'm here. No, it's gone off. I can still hear you. I can hear you. Why has it gone off? Oh dear, we've lost... We've lost um... Are you back with me? We went off there. Did I? I can hear you. I could hear you all the time, so I'm just, I said, because it, it wasn't shiny. Oh, can you see what I've done? Yeah, all the time it's shiny, you can add a little bit more. Okay. okay. If it's still light, just make, put more pigment in your paint. I think we are in the um, analogy of the gold, plastic golf cart, remember, so it's not... <laughs> We're never going to be, we're never going to be, oh, look, there we are, though. It's, it's, it's spreading. 
Is it spreading okay? It is, yeah. It's kind of like going away from itself. Can you see how it's grown and growing to the top of yeah. the... That's okay. That, because it will find its own edge. Yeah. And that means that um, you won't have a line. You'll only have a line where it's dry, next to where it's dry, or if the paper loses its shine. Yeah, no, it's still wet. And it's, gro it's growing itself. Oh, very... Can you, oh, that's what I was asking. Can I can I just add more water at this point to keep it shiny? Um, if you add more water, you'll dilute everything that you've got on the page. Okay. So remember, it does two jobs. It will not only allow you to spread um, the paint about. I'm pointing to you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it will allow you to spread this about around, but. Um, we had a guest. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> she's obviously jealous and she wants to get involved. And uh, she thought she'd come in and have a little go, see whether she could put a paw, paw print in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's working, Carol. It's working. Good. Good. I've got something that's right. semblance of more like, a, more like a sky than just a puddle. Okay. So you've got a flat. Yours has gone. Because you've got no, nothing drawn underneath, yes. you've got a flat line. Yes. Okay. I have. I've I got a, um, a bit of a dry. So between where you've got your sky and when where I'm going to draw up uh, to the hill on this, um, the next step. Yes. I would leave a little bit of white paper. Don't put it next to one another, otherwise it might bleed up into your sky too much. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to, instead of working on a large area, we're going to confine it to the, a hill, if you like. Okay. So I don't know if you want to just draw a hill in somewhere. I'll wait. You know, just, um, I've, if I turn around, can you see I've just drawn a line yeah. and I've just not taken the sky quite so far. Yeah, I'll wing it, don't worry. Okay. If you leave a, if you leave a dry line, they won't merge. Okay. So, now to do this, you 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 need to think. Um, I need some colours that will represent my hill yes. or my mountain or whatever. So um, I'm going to go for a little bit of that ready brown with a little tiny bit of blue, and you need to mix this up before you. Right. Do the wet and wet. So we're doing the wet, wet thing again. Yeah. I think I may have overdone well, it with the water last time. I because don't... there's so many um, variants with wet in wet, I thought we'd more or less keep it to that. Yes. Um, because we are covering things like another technique, which is hard edge, mm. which is basically what happens when you leave a dry spot. Okay. You'll end up with a hard edge next to it. Okay. Uh, so I've got um, a bit of browny colour. If I do mine first, and yeah, then I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch you. So I'll come if back. You watch me do mine, and then you can mix up whatever colours you want. But you need to do it prior to um, have you know trying it out on the paper, if you know what I mean. What? So there's there's my hard edge. Got to, I'm going to put the bluey colour up there. That's your hard edge, right? And then I've got a little bit of brown. If you end up with really watery, just get into the habit of trying to dip, uh, dab your brush on a bit of click, uh, kitchen roll. Okay. Because then it won't. It just takes the the excess water away. So all I'm doing is varying colour. Okay. Got a little bit of um, ochre in with the colour. Okay, that's ochre. Is that yellow? <laughs> yeah, a, must a mustardy yellow. Mustardy yellow. Okay. But hopefully you'll be able to see. I'll turn it round so you can see in a minute. I've just laid the colour onto the heel shape 
I see, I see. Rather than mixing it around and around, I've just put a little bit of blue, a little bit of orange next to it. And so that one color runs into another, but it's all in a dry space. So if you were doing um, something like, let's take the hill away. I already did it earlier with the flower, but if you were doing something like a pot, so let's draw a pot. A terracotta pot, but you wanted it to have a little bit of different colour in it. Mm. Just makes it more interesting because what, what you're actually doing, and as a beginner, you can end up just laying down one colour. Oh, and, wow, you see the that. and then it's got perspective, hasn't it? It's got three dimensionality about it. It's darker one side than the other. You could, but because it's got two colours going on in it, rather than just being one colour and then thinking I need to put a little bit of dark over the top. Yeah. It becomes um, clearer. It becomes. Uh, it's got clarity. Yeah. Even though it's sedimented, because it will do. Blues tend to do that. They tend to break up into this sort of sediment. Mm. Um, it 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 gives you variety in that first layer. So it means it stops you adding too many layers because the problem you have with watercolor is the more layers you put on top of one another the further away you get from the clarity you get because the paper shines through the paint. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so it's that, that transparency goes if you end up with too many layers. So if you can get as much colour down in that first layer, means that you don't really have the next layer up, I might have to add um, a little bit of dark in here. Yes. And that's a bit here. And I may end up having to add a bit more dark here and perhaps a, a bit of dark there, but I won't have to do anything else to it because it's already done in that top layer. And it's got the white highlights in it because you leave the bits of white showing through, which I really like. That All that is, is what I did at the very beginning with the flower, just to leave a little tiny bit of white. Let me go back to that, where I did that. Yeah, sorry, put it down a bit because so you're just up from the screen, can't see it. There we go. Remember I left little bits of white? Yes. And I tried to show you that the white will always stay where mm. you don't put the water. So you, you can manipulate the water to do whatever you want. The paint will only run where you put the water. Mm. I love the way you did the pot. I thought that was super clever. Super well, the fact that you drew it upside down as well was also super clever. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have ended up as a it would have ended up as a pot that should have gone in the bin from the potter. Did you want, <laughs> have you I'm, had? A, you want have a go at the hill? Okay, I'm going to have a go at the hill. Am I? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Have a go at your hill. Right. Me going. And I'll I'll mix some different colour up for the next bit. Right. So I'm going to have a go at the hill now, people. Did I have to put water down first or not? Uh, no, you can do it dry. You just mix up several runny colours and you lay them next to one and I'll just drop them in with the tip of your brush. Right, and you wanted uh, the blue just on the edge, didn't you? First. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just, it, this is about seeing what, how the paint will run next to one another. Mm -hmm. If you've got a slightly thicker mix, it will take over from the thinner mix. The secret is to drop it in and not mix on the surface. So just drop the colour in. Yeah. That's it. Drop, just drop it rather than rub it on, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Yeah, it should, it should move into one another because it's water. 
yeah, that yeah. in the mix that's allowing it. If it's very pale, then go back to your colours and just mix one up a little bit stronger and then come back and drop that in and see what that's like. Go on again. I'm here. I'm definitely here. <laughs> I'm definitely. Must be the connection. There we are. We keep losing Carol because she. But we can we can hear you, Carol. That's the thing. Oh, that's okay then. We can hear you. It might be that you just lose us for a moment. There, look at that. It's just kind of spreading. Yeah, it will. Look, and this is decorous as yours. <laughs> and and in that little in that little shape, you can drop whatever colour you want all the time. It's shiny. Okay. If you drop water in it, it, it will push everything away and just make it all light because you're adding white, if you like, to think of it that way. Mm. Okay, and then I can use my paper again to just dab off some of that. There. Yeah. If it's still damp and you want it to be darker, then mix up your mixture just a little bit stronger and drop that in. See what that's like. Okay, we're going stronger mixture. Add a little bit of, uh, you've got an, uh, what have you got there? An orangey brown? Yeah. Um, add a little bit of um, the blue to it. Oh, a bit of blue, okay. A bit of the blue I've mixed up. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone darker. Shall I add that yeah. then? Add that now and see what that does. Is it staying or is it spreading? Oh, it's spreading. Look. Just spreading itself out. It's, it's just a learning curve to see what the paint will do. Yeah. Yours looks like a really believable mountain. Mine, mine doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's, Yours looks like it's a heather strewn mountainside. Okay, go back to the blue. Go back to your blue mixture. Yeah. Just use pure blue. Yeah. Now come back and just drop it in next to the brown. It's mixing on the surface. Yeah. Itself. And should take on a sort of different look than if you um, just used the one color and. No, that is, that's working now. Right, yeah. wash, wash your brush and take the excess water off on a bit of tissue and then go back to your brown. Be careful not to dab too much of the water away because if you go back to your brown, you can add a little bit more brown where you want it. Ready brown, where you want it. If you dab too much, you make the paper dry again. Yeah. Oh, we're looking more heather-like now. <laughs> this technique you can come back to again and again and again because it's only the same one that you use for, the, for backgrounds or mountains or individual things. You can see if you were painting fruit, if you were doing an apple, you could do the same thing. It's contained within that one shape. Yeah, I've, I, I, I think. Let me just on there. I'll just do it quickly. You know, we've got, so. we've virtually got a heather strewn mountain going on here, <laughs> which is incredible because it wasn't looking like that just now. It's patience. I'm not very good on the patience front. That, okay. is, that is looking super cool. I'm actually quietly chuffed. <laughs> With my mound heather strewn mountain side here. This is um, the same thing, only I've done, I don't know, tomato, piece of fruit. Oh, yeah, I see. It's just containing the colour. Right, I will put you back on main because. Just, just the colour within colour. It's the hard edge, hard edge technique is this, it's on dry paper. Do you know, it's the easiest technique. I could never figure out why it was a technique when they were showing me at college. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, 
if you paint a shape on dry paper, it will always have a hard edge. Yes. But although that's the easiest and most obvious thing, if you paint on damp paper without thinking, all of a sudden you haven't got a hard edge. No, I You've got this soft edge next door. So a hard edge and a soft edge. Yeah. And that soft edge is what was in that landscape with the heather where it was all sort of soft and misty. Yes. It's sort of lost, but sometimes you want that hard edge. If you were doing a building, you'd want a hard edge. There you go. Yeah, look. That's fine. It's looking good. Look, I'm proud of myself. Okay. First Let's watercolor painting since the age of six. <laughs> Let's do some, uh, let's just do um, on my on my painting that I was going to do, the main painting, I've got a few trees. So I'm going to show you how you can do exactly the same thing with trees. So this is always a background for things. Although if you go in stronger with the colour for something like a mountain, you've done it in one go. You don't really need to go over it again. If you get the strength right of colour, Yes. You don't really need to go over and make it darker in another place. It's fine. But I'm going to do trees. So I'm going to do, you need a bit of yellow with your blue to make a, a light green. And then you also need to make a dark version of that green, whichever one you. So I've got lemon yellow here with a bit of the blue. And if I use the blue and the lemon yellow and less water but and more blue, it should come out darker. And if it's not, if it hasn't gone darker, then put a little bit of your red in. It will. So you should have something like a dark green and a lighter colour, something like that. Okay. So I've done a little tiny row of trees. I'm going to take them out because they look pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make them a bit bigger. And I'm not actually going to draw them because if you lay your brush on sideways, so if you, if you go to your brush, and lay it on, I'm turning it over. If you look at the, the what I'm doing with the brush, yeah. I've gone from holding it, can you see, holding it like that to holding it in my fingers okay. that way. And I'm going to just lay it on the paper. Oh, okay. Sideways on the paper, in a, in a little line of trees. And then while it's damp, while it's still damp, I'm going to add the dark mixture. Yeah. Make sure the darker mixture is a little tiny bit thicker than the lighter color you've got. And just lay it on the side where you want it to represent shadow. Okay. Dark's taking off a little bit. I'm lifting out a little bit here because it's running away a little bit. This is dry paper with wet paint. Yeah, so we got a little line of trees. Okay. But you can do the same. I'll find another example. Why is it you never have enough room, do you? <laughs> Um, as an artist, I've never got enough room. We'll try this holding this paintbrush thing. I've got to try this. Um, yeah, that way. Thumb on top. Thumb on top. Okay. I'll shake you can it just sort of lay it down, your brush on the side, and the, it should just come off your brush onto your paper sideways. Okay. So we're just doing. Okay. 
Oh, there's a bit more paper on there. Okay. So, um, a, a similar example. I thought I had a better example on a, on a piece of paper. Then we're going to put in the highlights, which is over here. Give it a go with the highlights. I suppose that's um, a similar example. You can see the, the bushes in the background are laid in by doing wet in wet. So let's do let's do a little bit more where the pot's gone. So you can lay it in like a row of bushes. So let's do it upside down. I'll do it upside down so you can see. Now we may have a similar situation to the mountain side where my trees may not be quite as convincing as yours. See, I'm just literally laying the two colours in next to one another. Yeah. Enough, enough to give the first layer of a bit of foliage that you could come back to and add a little bit more dark on top, even if it runs and you haven't got it as dark where you want it to go. You, when you put another layer on, it will go darker. So it's just a way of doing a little bit of foliage. And you can do this. We could do the same with the rocks because rocks um, on this painting that I was going to do are the same as the big rock at the back. They're tackled in exactly the same way. So all you do, you can wet the area and you can drop the color in where you want it to go. Just vary it so it's not all the same. Otherwise it becomes a bit boring. Yeah. So it's really down to you dropping in what colour you want for your rocks or just a drop of water to keep it lighter if you think it's I need to keep it lighter. As I said, you can always come back and do another layer if you felt you needed to. So the rocks at the side of, in my landscape, are a mixture of the reddy colour and the blue. They're all a mixture of the colours that I already had okay. in the paint. I see. I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting better at this now. I'm getting more used to this, how the paint, the paint moves around, but it only stays within the watered area. So that's, yeah. I'm quite liking that, how you can like kind of drizzle. Yeah, and the thickness of the paint, you will get used to that. Um, and you're, you'll find if, um, if you had slightly more fluid paint rather than it being, you can, I, I bet you can tell as you're mixing this up how chalky it is as you're mixing it in the box. I can, can you... tell that this is the, um, as you described it, this is definitely the plastic. <laughs> um, when you mix on there, okay. you can tell the chalk in the paint. Yeah. But that's okay, because I'm only I'm only learning and and you can learn and I'm you learning. Can learn the I've got the technique and I'm learning how it all moves around. So it doesn't matter if you've only got, you know, people who are watching, if you've only got um, what I've got, which is the kids' watercolour palettes. And um, it's enough to give you, um, it's enough to give you uh, incentive if you really want to, exactly. you really like it and you've enjoyed what you've done, then go and get yourself something better to work with. Exactly, because I have actually surprised myself <laughs> by the fact that I, I've actually really, really enjoyed it, Carol. 
I just love, I love the way it all sediments when you do it next, you know, when you get the colour. You've, I've put it in separately, but it's all mixed on the paper. And it's the fact that the water is like magic. It sort of does its own thing. I love this, the way that you can like start moving it all around. So it stays within the boundaries of the wet bit, as you said, the hard edge. But you can yeah. just kind of like manipulate the paint around. So you, you've actually learned two techniques, wet in wet, that you can use slightly thicker paint and get a slightly different effect. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Okay. Um, let's do it here. Let's do the wet okay. in wet. Oh, that's what mine now looks like. It's looking good. No, it's fine. It's you haven't it's painted it. Works. <laughs> Often as beginners, they end up putting too much paint on and over painting. So you haven't done that, which is good. Don't start, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take, it doesn't really matter what color you take, but the next mix, mixture you put on top of it actually has to be thicker, a thicker mix. So this is your way of testing whether your mix that you're putting on is actually thicker because it will run away in the whole thing if it's not thicker. And the, what we're trying to do, let's find the picture. It's always going back to something. You can never find it when you want it. There's the drawing that I wanted. But so on on something like this. Yes. Can you see the purple in the sky? It's a thick, thicker mix on here than what's in the background. So we've got a yellow wash that was on there, first of all. And then on top of that, I've added a slightly darker yellow. I've just put a little bit of this in with the yellow and I've added it to this. And I know I've added it while the background's still wet because we've got soft edge. It's soft. Mm. And you'll only get that soft edge where the paper's damp. You get a hard edge where the paper's dry. Okay. And this paint, the purple bit, was a lot thicker than the yellow in the background. So we're going to do this, but we're going to do trees that run up in. So instead of a great big sky, because that's a bit too daunting to start off with. I don't know, it's because. And then that'll be about, I think that'll be about it because we will have been doing this for over an hour. And I think I, I, need, I, I'm, I need to process this. I need just to show you, before I show you trees, yeah. can I just show you too how when you lay down a wash to start off with and you create a background, so there's a variegated colour background. Push that forward because we can't quite see it. There we go. That's it. Perfect. Oh, that's amazing. So wherever you want a red flower, you can do pink in the background. You can do a soft yellow on something where you want to be stronger color on the top or pink at the back of purple. And then you come back and you just, you can see on this, you can see, so it could end up something like that, but it started out like that. Like that. Yeah. So all this goes on top. That's what I'm saying. You can put more layers on top of the wet in wet that starts out. Yes. Um, and all this is just don't paint what's in the background. You All that's showing through there is what's in the background. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that wet in wet technique is really useful, not only for individual things, but for backgrounds, um, for laying in skies. It's really essential technique to learn because you can cover so much ground you can do a whole sky which is half your painting and you've you've just shown that you can do half your painting that way and your heels so the whole thing is almost finished now but you've done it all more or less in one technique just with tweaks yeah. you know and, and you could go over this with pen and stuff when it was dry couldn't you you could add in yeah. you know, however you let's want. just let's just do this 
greenery for the last finish off with the greenery yeah we might have to do a follow-up session later <laughs> when you've had a chance to practice <laughs> a chance to practice exactly yeah anyone who's watching watch out for the follow-on the um master class follow-on when leslie's done a bit more practicing and she's got we're out of lockdown and she's got better paint <laughs> Okay, let's make these trees move up into the sky. So um, let's go for, let's do that sunsetty sky. Let's go for a sort of yellow color in the background. I've done it on dry paper, but it's quite a, it's quite a thin wash. Mm. I'm just going to take it up further so it actually looks like sky. And we're going to try and do like the silhouette you get. So on this, while it's still damp, while the paper's still shiny, still got that damp look, I've got a thicker mix, much thicker mix. This is more pasty now. Mm. So oh, I've got a bit of a shine on here, but the, I can see the water started to go slightly. And if I add my trees now, they'll do what they um, what was happening in your mountain where it was spreading. Yes. And just going soft. I'm doing that. Am I doing that kind of flat hand thing? You can do. I'm going to put in a little bit of sky colour. If I turn that round. Yeah. And what happens is because it's blurred at the edges, it's a trick really to make things look as if they're out of focus slightly. Yeah. So mid ground on the landscape where things are further away and you want them to look a bit further away, they will because they haven't got a hard edge. Yeah, I get, I get it. In fact, you can still, even on this, I can lift out so that I've got a lighter bit, if you like, down one side than the other. So I can still vary this all the time it's shiny. I can lift off and play around with it. As soon as this, the shine starts to go, you really do have to leave things alone. So you can get away with this, lifting off which is what I've done in here, playing around with it. I think mine is what you would call abstract expressionism. <laughs> if it's moved out too far, if it's traveled up the paper too far, it's because your mix wasn't thick enough. Yeah. But then, you know, this is your first lesson. Okay. It's really hard to get to grips with it all at once. So we're just going to finally close. I'll, I'll humiliate myself and show everyone. Should I turn it up? Should I turn my camera up? Yeah, you turn your camera up. Go on to gallery view. And there you are. That's my, that was my first attempt. I think that's pretty good. I don't think it's all that bad. It could have been worse, <laughs> couldn't it? It could have I think worse. it's down to, um, it's really hard at the beginning. I wrote this down in my notes somewhere that it's hard as a beginner to actually deal with how thick you want the paint and, and get your head around that the water will also make it lighter. Yes. As well as thinner. Yeah. It's, um, it's just down to practice. Yeah, I think. You've really given us some amazing techniques there. And, and if I can follow them, then they can't be that tricky because <laughs> I've, as I say, not touched anything like this for a long time. So I'm so chuffed. Thank you so much. Let me go back up until you can see my face. Otherwise, it's, it looks like someone from the, the way beyond is saying thank you to you. There we are. <laughs> thank you so much, Carol. It's absolutely so brilliant. I really I'm, enjoyed, I'm it. Glad you enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it and I and I made something that looks a semblance of something that looks like a bit of a tree and a, a and a mountainside so that's amazing. The thing was you didn't draw any of it you didn't draw no. anything 
No. No, it was, it's no. incredible. Thank you so much for no. sharing that with us. And um, if you want to see more of Carol's work, then go into the magazine and also there will be, um, uh, she's got her double page spread in the magazine. So you'll be able to see that in the uh, Art360 magazine. And um, yeah, and then just get in touch with us if you want to hear more from Carol. I'm sure she will be very happy to share more techniques as I get better paints. So yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this again. Thank you so much, Carol. Okay, then.